Hey, Phil Play from BadAstronomy.com doing my live Q&BA video chat session for April 15th, 2012. And I got a pretty good question from Brianna Thomas who asks, so far, how many exoplanets have been discovered? Now, exoplanets is a great term. I love that. It sounds very science fiction-y. Exoplanets! Um, we used to call them extrasolar planets, but that's actually kind of a mouthful, and I like exoplanets better. These are planets orbiting other stars. And the first ones were detected in the early 1990s orbiting a pulsar, of all things, a dead star that had blown up as a supernova. An ultra-compact star, extremely dense neutron star, was left over, and, and actually several planets were found orbiting it. It wasn't until uh, 1995, I believe it was, that a planet was found orbiting a sun-like star, a star more like the sun that's actually fusing hydrogen into helium in its core and looks like a star. Uh, since then, though, we've been dis discovering more and more. There are many ways of discovering them, and I'll answer your question. I'll give you an actual answer here. Just give me a sec. Um, there are several methods for uh, figuring this out. For example, uh, here is my yellow tennis ball model star of science, and let's say there's a planet orbiting it. They both have gravity. So as the planet is orbiting the star, because the star's gravity is forcing, you know, I can, I can do it this way to make, make you see it better. As the planet's orbiting the star, it's actually tugging on the star as well. So they're actually making circles around each other, around a, a central point called the Berry Center. It's, it's essentially the center of mass. So this guy, which is, has less mass, is making a big circle. The planet's making a big circle. And the star's making a little circle that's opposite the planets. It's hard to do. <laughs> um, and you can detect that motion. Now, you don't usually physically see the star moving, although that's actually been done once. What's actually happening is that if the planet is tugging on the star and it's in, you know, sort of like this, you're looking at the star this way, um, you can see a Doppler shift in the starlight. It's the same thing that makes a, you know, a motorcycle go as it goes past you. That's sound, but the same thing works for light. And if you have a very sensitive telescope and the right equipment, you can detect that. And a lot of planets have been detected that way. Another way is if the planet's orbit is perfectly aligned so that it goes directly between you and the star, right? It blocks the starlight. It might, you know, it might, let's see, do it this, uh, this way. Here we go. It might go straight across the center of the star, or it might cut a cord across it, or just nick it, or whatever. Um, but what happens when, when that happens is if you watch the star, you don't see the planet. You just see the starlight dip and then go back up as the planet passes in front of it. That's called a transit. And that method is being used by, for example, the Kepler spacecraft, which is staring at 100,000 stars. <coughs> pardon me, staring at 100,000 stars for years looking for that telltale dip in brightness. And Kepler's been doing a fantastic job. Um, it's actually discovered thousands. I, I, it's something like now 2,000 planetary candidates. Now, these aren't necessarily confirmed planets because they've seen a dip in the starlight that looks like a planet. They might have even seen two dips some months apart. But you have to wait for that third dip. That's the critical one because it does it... It does it um, once, and you don't know what it could be. It could be a sunspot. It could be a star pattern. You don't know what it is. If it happens again, that establishes the period, six months, let's say, for the planet to go around the star. Then you wait another six months, and if it happens again, boom, you got it. So you have to wait for three of those planet years to, uh, to see that. Um, and it's, it's found lots of candidates, but it's only found about five dozen, something like 60 confirmed planets. However, if you go online... There are lots of databases, lots of places where you can find information about extrasolar planets. There's the Extrasolar Planet Encyclopedia, which is uh, usually uh, quite up to date, has a lot of information about all the planets that have been found. Um, you know, with some things with Wikipedia, you don't know if it's accurate or not, but I have found that when it comes to topics like this, Wikipedia is usually pretty good. And uh, looking at Wikipedia right now, under Extrasolar Planet, um, it gives a definition and all that, and it says right now, uh, as of um, uh, probably pretty recent, uh, probably probably April, it says there are 763 confirmed planets, 611 planetary systems, that is 611 single planets orbiting stars, and 101 multiple planet systems, stars that have more than one planet orbiting them. Uh, right now, I think the record uh, confirmed is uh, six planets, and there was one recently found, I just wrote about it, that may have nine, nine. Uh, I think the seventh planet was uh, confirmed. A uh, little sketchy. Mm, I, I, you know, it's not 100% that it has at least seven planets, but we know it has six, and it probably has nine, which is 
amazing. It's more planets than we have, uh, given you know Pluto and all that. Don't worry about that. There are other things you can do. Um, for example, uh, if you have an iPad or an iPhone, uh, Kepler has an app called, um, it's by Open Lab, uh, uh, University of California, Santa Cruz. Um, well, I don't see the name of the app. It just came up and, well, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, if you look here, it has, you can, you can get a list of uh, what kind of planetary systems you want to see. Sorry, there's a reflection there. And it'll put up a little map of the system, and you can make the planet go around the star and do all kinds of fun stuff like that. That's a really great app. Um, the one I like is called Exoplanet. And uh, this one says, oh, it's updating the database. As I'm sitting here, I can download. It's downloading the database. Ooh. And it says, discovered exoplanet 760. That's interesting. Wikipedia says 763. But I, you know, I don't know which one is more accurate. But you know, this gives you the idea. 760. 760 confirmed planets orbiting other stars. Now remember, 1990, which is when I was starting my PhD research using Hubble, um, we didn't know of any. We had nine planets on our solar system. This was before Pluto was, was called a dwarf planet. Um, and there were zero planets, zero known outside of our solar system. Now, uh, 20 years later, we know of approaching 1,000, and there's so many more discovered every year. Um, this exoplanet database is great because you can see here's this big list of, of, um, of planets, and you can, you can click through them, and there's diagrams, and shows you the relative sizes and all that kind of stuff. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff for Android. There's stuff for your desktop. It's fantastic. And, and it, this is incredible. Because by looking at, especially with Kepler and with some of these other, uh, these other projects, by looking at these stars, what's happening is we're discovering so many planets that we're actually starting to get a statistical idea of how many planets there are in the galaxy. You know, if you look at one star and it doesn't have stars, it doesn't have planets, you don't really know anything. If you look at one star and it does, you can kind of say, well, maybe they're common if the first star we look at has planets. So, you know, you want to look at as many stars as you can. And then you can say, oh, if 1% of them have planets, then maybe 1% of all stars have planets, as long as you have a big enough statistical sample. Kepler's looking at 100,000 stars. And these are all different stars. It's just a boom in the sky. It's just a part of the sky. So they're not picking sun-like stars. You're just taking a nice spread, a nice sample. And what we're finding uh, is that a significant fraction of stars have planets. 10% more? have planets at all. Now, only a fraction of those will have planets like the Earth, and only a fraction of those will have planets, you know, at the right distance from the star to have liquid water or the conditions for life as we know it to exist. But the, the beauty of all this is that there are something like two to four hundred billion, billion, with a B, billion, billion stars in the Milky Way galaxy. So even if a tiny fraction and you, you, you wind up doing all that math and say, you know, only one in a million stars will have planets like the Earth with the conditions that are right for life. Yeah, out of 400 billion, one in a million is 400,000. 400,000 Earths. And I bet that that number's too low. There are probably um, hundreds of billions of planets in our galaxy alone. Planets bigger than Jupiter, whatever. Um, but I, I strongly suspect there are a lot of Earth-like planets out there. And in fact, um, I've been saying this for a while now, probably an Earth-like planet orbiting a Sun-like star in the Goldilocks zone, in that habitable zone, where it's the right temperature for liquid water to exist on the surface, I bet that a planet like that is already in the Kepler data and has not been seen yet. Because... It, it takes a year to go around that star or something like a year. And since you have to wait for three orbits, that means, you know, you discover it maybe the first day you look, then a year later and then a, another year later. So it takes two full years to find that. Kepler's only been up a little bit longer than that. So it's not been able to completely confirm all this. And then it, the data is very fuzzy. It's hard to tell. But I strongly, strongly suspect that very, very soon we will be getting an announcement of a confirmed Earth-like planet orbiting a Sun-like star in the habitable zone. I don't think that's too much farther in the future. So we went from no planets known in 1990 outside of our solar system to being able to find them, being able to characterize them, being able to get statistics on them, being able to predict how many there are in the galaxy, to possibly seeing, not yet, but possibly seeing an Earth-like planet 
in, in, in every sense of the word Earth-like. And we've done all of that in 25 years, less. It's incredible. This is a great time to be alive as far as science goes.